welcome board members. The boardroom is open and tonight's boardroom meeting is all about tapestry and the autumn rules. How to play tapestry by yourself. It's a game about civilizations. It's a game about advancing technologies and science and um, exploration and military. There's four advancement tracks for your civilization to advance upon and throughout the game you're going to discover new and improve technologies to gain resources to spend on more stuff to uncover. And then during the course of the game, you unlock eras, etc. Now, this particular video is for people who have already played or have knowledge of playing tapestry, but are looking to get into the solo rules. Maybe you read the Automa book, or maybe it was a little confusing, maybe it was just a little crazy. I've played it a few times. Um, I won the first time I played it, and then I read all the rules I was doing wrong. And then haven't won since. Uh, it's a it's a it's quite a challenge, and I I'm excited about it because it was actually really really fun. So I want to beat the Automa game at some point. But I had a lot of fun. So that's what the, that's what we're going to talk about in this video. In a solo game of tapestry, you'd think there'd only be one player, you. But you would also be wrong. There are actually three players in a solo game of tapestry. There's you, the player, the one you figured would be there. But the other two are the AI, the, the bots, the automa. In this particular game, there are two opponents, for lack of a better word, but there's only one real opponent. They are the Shadow Empire, is one opponent. And the Shadow Empire is a very, very, they take a very passive role. They do very little, and we'll get into what each of these players do. They take a very passive role and just kind of gum up the works. The real uh, opponent is the automa. Bot, which we will just refer to as bot for the rest of this video. The bot takes their turn in, in very interesting and different ways. So we'll dig into the bot heavily. And then there's you, the active player. The active player, you're pretty much going to play a turn like you would normally play when you play the game of tapestry. One of the interesting things about tapestry and the automa rules are the separate components you use just for the solo version. Now, in the solo game, you're going to use all the regular components of Tapestry, but there are some additional components needed. So let's get down to the board and take a look at what those are. Two of the most interesting components for the solo rules variant are these two deck of cards, the decision cards and the progress deck. The decision deck, they tell the bot and the Shadow Empire what to do turn after turn. The progress deck at the end of each round, you'll take two cards from here and add it to here, thus extending their turns every round. Now, as you know, in a game of tapestry, you get about four to five turns in your first round, but then you start to generate more and more resources and you'll have more and more turns per round. This is the way the bot and Shadow Empire get more and more actions between rounds. Those are some of the comp specific components. The other major component is the bot's player mat. Now, this mat shows you uh, quite a few different things. So let's go over that. First thing is this spot right here up top is where you put their civilization. Their civilization looks a little different. Maybe they are scientists. Maybe they are explorers. And maybe they are engineers. Or maybe they are conquerors. So they're going to be one of those four. And once you have that in place, so let's just say that they're going to be scientists. Okay, they're scientists. So income turns two and, or income turns three and five, they are going to roll the science die. Over here, this area shows you what they do on their income turns. Two, three, four, and five. Two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, and four. Two, three, and four. Two, three, four, and five, and so on. This is normal. They get the benefit of their civilization. This is they start to add up victory points, which we'll talk about in a minute. This here shows that I add two cards of the progress deck into the decision deck. This is where I'll take a tapestry card and place it face down over the current era, go like so. 
then they generate another tapestry card for their tapestry card pile, which we will talk about in a minute, and then shuffle the decision deck, and their, their income turn is over. How they generate income, right here on the side. If they're in their second era, they're going to get one point for every landmark they've controlled and for every territory they control. They'll get no multiplier for military and science tracks, and they will get one time multiplier for every technology and exploration track. So every space they are advanced along these tracks. And that's uh, science. And technology. Once that round is over, they're going to cover this. In the next income phase, they're going to get double the points here, single the points here, single the points here. They'll cover this one and then move on to this scoring rack and then this scoring track. So you can see as the eras go by, they're going to get more and more points for each of these items and their scores really start to ramp up, especially when they start controlling a lot of landmarks. If they are the first player, to cover up this era, they're going to get a bonus two points, then a bonus three points, and a bonus four points. It's much like your bonus if you're the first one to enter a new era and you get your free goods. This is the same, but they get victory points because they don't claim goods as a bot player. Okay, so we talked about the decision deck, the progress deck, and the Automa bots player mat. Those are the specific components that you have to have in the game when you play with the solo rules or tapestry. Let's talk about setup. Setup is a little different as well. Let's go to the board and take a look at that. First thing you need to know when you set up the game of tapestry with the Automo rules is that you, as the player, always set your piece on the 2-4 space. You use, of course, the 1-3 to three player side of the board, as is marked 1-3 to three players right here. You will start on the 2-4 to four player section. Choose a color for the bot. And for this particular purpose, I chose blue. They get their income mat, which we already looked at. You take all outposts of their color, which is blue, place two of them on the territory labeled 3-5. I don't know that you need to topple one over. I always topple one over because that's the rule that one's toppled and one isn't, even though they're both the same. But it just shows that I can't conquer it because there are already two outposts on that territory. Take all player tokens of its color. Place one on the zero space of the VP track, and place one on the start of every other advancement track. Roll the science die. And I did it prior. It came up exploration. Take one outpost and put it on exploration, or whatever you rolled. That is their favored track for the game, or for now. Now choose a color for the Shadow Empire. I chose red. You're going to take all outposts of their color. Take their player tokens, put one on the starting space of each advancement track. You're going to roll a science die again, and you roll until you get something that the other player didn't get. In this particular instance, let's just say technology. The decision cards and progress cards all look very similar, but they have numbers in the bottom corner. You take numbers 8 through 22, that's the progress deck, and you shuffle them up. The beginning decision deck is numbered 1 through 7. Here, you're going to add one card from here to this, and shuffle that. And that's your starting decision deck. Okay, so we talked about the players, we talked about the setup, we talked about the components, we are ready to talk about how each player, including you as the regular player, normal player, the player, takes their turn. So you've got the bot. Now the bot's turn is the most convoluted. Uh, it's crazy. They get to do a lot of things for not being able to do so many things. There's a list of icons in the rule book that that's all they follow. And I'll list them here. We go back to the table to show you how the bot takes their turn. So the first thing to note about the bot player is they only gain benefits from the science die icon, the invent technology icon, the conquer icon, the explore icon, 
the Advance on a Track or Regress on a Track icon, and the Gain a Tapestry card icon. Knowing that the bot only gets benefits from those icons, here's how they take their turn. First, you discard any decision cards that are already in play and draw two more. So we'll draw two, one, two, and here they are. You put them together side by side like so, and you ignore the entire left side of the left card and the entire right side of the right card. You only deal with what's in the middle section here. This is called the decision card, and this is called the tiebreaker card. Let's go over the icons that you see here. In the upper right here, you're going to see the big box. This box here represents all tracks that are not finished. So any track that is not yet completed, the bot player gets to advance on all of them. But since they're all not advanced to the end, they're all tied. The tiebreaker card says, starting from top to bottom, they choose their favorite track first, then the science track, then the exploration track, and so on and so forth. So if their favorite track was finished and the other three were tied, it would pick in this order, technology, military, then science. The Shadow Empire is the S. This says they'll advance on the track nearest the end or the closest landmark. If their cube is closer to a landmark than they are to the end, they will advance on that track. Also, the tiebreaker happens, but in reverse, from the bottom up. Science, military, exploration, technology, then their favorite track. That's how you read advancement on the decision cards. If the bot player's advancement puts them on an explore action, they're going to draw a random tile and place it on the board. But where do they place it? Well, there's a card for that. You'll note here that this diagram shows you a map of the map and tells you where to start counting and in which direction. And until you reach a valid space, so in this particular instance, it said start counting in this direction. So we'll go this way, then this way, then this way. Now, this is a valid spot, and it's the first valid spot. However, this is where I say some of the rules are convoluted, in my opinion. If they've yet to conquer the center island, they want the closest spot to the center island. So this would be the place that they set that tile. If their action advances on the military track to a conquer action, they conquer in the same way. They follow the arrows and conquer the territory. Interesting enough, we go back to this example, and it's all the way this way. And again, they haven't conquered the middle aisle, so they treat this very spot as a conquer action. They get to take the top tile, set it down. Conquer it, topple a shadow empire so I can't take it away from them. If they advance on technology, they don't draw an invention. Instead, they discard all three and replace them. Just like so. If they advance on science, They'll roll the science die and either not gain the benefit if there's an X or gain the benefit if there's no X. Anytime they advance, they always gain the benefit but do not gain the bonus. If they advance to one of the spaces where they can choose to advance, they don't choose and roll the science die instead. If they advance to get a tapestry card, they'll gain a tapestry card and it'll go near their player board for a pile of tapestry cards to be used later. That's pretty much the bot's turn and the Shadow Empire's turn, unless it's an income turn. So let's take a look at that. When I take two cards from the decision deck, if this deck is empty, you'll take an income turn instead of an advancement turn. So let's talk about the income turn. During your income turn, on income phases two and four, 
you'll advance once on the exploration track, three and five once on the military track. It is the second income phase, so they will advance on the exploration track. Thus getting to explore by taking a random tile from the top and following the tiebreaker decision card on the last two cards played. If their favorite track has a player cube that reached the end, then their favorite track will change in the following manner. Whichever track is closer to a landmark or the end of a track will become their new favorite track. So in this particular instance, if they've reached the end of exploration, their next favorite track would be military because they're only one space away from a landmark. Here they haven't moved yet, so they're four spaces away. And on science, they're three spaces away. Take their player outpost marker and move it to military, and that's their new favorite track. Next, gain the bonus from whatever civilization card they started the game with. Then they get victory points in the following manner, as talked about earlier. One for every landmark claimed, one for every territory they occupy, one for every space on the technology track, and one for every space on the exploration track. After that, add two cards from the progress deck to the decision discard pile. Take a tapestry card and place it face down on the first spot. Grab another tapestry card and put it on their pile of tapestry cards to be used later. Last but not least, shuffle the discard pile of decision cards with the two new cards added from the progress deck, forming a new decision deck. Okay, we've talked about the bot. We've talked about the Shadow Empire, who, again, doesn't do a whole lot. They just kind of scoot along the tracks trying to mess things up. Really what they want to do is take landmarks from you. Because any time they reach a landmark, they're going to get the appropriate landmark from the landmark board and place it right here in this section. I've played this three times, and they've gotten no less than five uh, landmarks against me every time. They just... They move right along these tracks and get a lot of landmarks. So if you're trying to get a lot of landmarks, good luck. I wish you the best. So we've talked about the bot. We've talked about the Shadow Empire. Now it's time to talk about you, the player. What do you do differently in this game? Well, here's the thing. You're going to take your turn as normal, except for the fact that if you were playing with other people, you'd have no idea what their strategy is. That, in my opinion, is where this game is... It's still fun. I mean, imagine, imagine going to war, but you knew what your opponent's objective was. So you'd go to war quite differently. So you're going to play this game quite differently in that respect. You're going to make decisions you generally wouldn't make because you know what they're trying to accomplish. And you could thwart what they're trying to accomplish and still accomplish something in the same vein. You could just pretty much say, i just going to do everything you want to do before you, and then I'll get to do everything. The one thing that is different, when you play against the bot player and you try to conquer their territory, take a look at the table and see how that goes down. So you want to conquer the bot player, huh? Well, here's what you get to do. You're here, and you advance on the military track, and you say, I'm going to conquer this territory. You take your piece. You roll your dice. Hey, look at there. I get six victory points, or I get gold or coins and topple your piece. Not so fast, Napoleon Bonaparte. You get to do this. From the bot's pile of tapestry card, you're going to draw cards until you either reveal a trap card Trap card. It's a trap! If you reveal a trap card, you get to do this. Topple yours instead. How fair is that? Oh, that's cold. If instead they didn't have a trap card, you would just keep drawing their tapestry cards until they ran out. And then you know you're safe to conquer them again and again until they draw more tapestry cards. 
That right there is the major difference in the way you got to play this game against the solo bot. It's not fully overpowered because in the game, if you were just playing against other players, they would have a hand with a couple of tapestry cards. And it may, they may have one. The rules state that you draw these randomly from, you draw these randomly from the bot's hand or pile, if you will. But it says you keep doing it until you draw a trap card or empty their hand. And again, the fact of the matter is, if a player had a trap card and you try to conquer them, they were going to play it. So it's effectively emptying their, not emptying their hand, but they're going to play it. So what this does is dumps them t the, um, dumps the bot's player's hand up until the trap card, still not revealing any cards after that. Anyhow, that's the major difference between how you would normally play and how you play against the bot. Okay, so that's it. You play like that through five income phases, just like the normal game. It ends just like the normal game. Maybe the bot ends their fifth era first. Maybe you end your fifth era first. I like to have them end it first so I know what points I need to beat. If I end it first, I have to hope to have a lot of points banked so that they don't thwart me. I have a lot of fun playing this solo. I can't wait to beat them. One thing to note, there are six levels of difficulty in this game. I played it on level two. I don't know if that makes me terrible or what, but the major difference on all of these levels is the following. The income phases change dramatically. Level two, you go from top to bottom, left to right. Level three, adds a step here where they get to do the action on the decision card one more time. So they're going to advance and do the income phase instead of just doing the income phase. That's level three. Level four, they're going to do that action and take an income turn. They're going to add two cards from the progress deck. Then they're going to add two more cards from the progress deck. So their progress deck gets really big really fast. Level five is so tough that they put it on the backside and even named it hard. Level five and six all happen like this. You still get the extra action. You're going to add two cards. Then on turns three and four, you're going to add four more cards. So first you add two cards. Then you're going to add six cards, then six cards. So their actions start to ramp up. But levels five and six also have, during income phase one on level five, they get to advance on their favorite track. During income phase one on level six, they advance on all four tracks and get their bonus from their civilization. Now level one, I could have advanced on all four tracks, but I didn't want to play on such an easy spot. So that's going to do it for solo rules for Tapestry, the Automa Factory. It's a lot of fun. If you have Tapestry and have been on the fence about trying the solo rules, I hope you do it. It was a little bit uh, to kind of get these cards and figure out, okay, what are the tiebreakers and what causes a tie and which island do I settle for the bot player and follow the arrows. They won't guide you wrong. Same thing with the Shadow Empire. Follow the arrows. They won't guide you wrong. Uh, as long as you can count to whichever is the closest landmark or the end of a track, it's really, really easy to determine which space to go. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like this content and want to see more of it, please subscribe to the YouTube channel Boardroom Gamer, and I'll see you at the next Boardroom meeting.